In the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, students are being forced to deal with a lot of change quickly. Social distancing is important, but it can take a toll on students' mental health. Change is stressful. During normal semesters, students are at risk for high anxiety and even suicide. Fear and uncertainty related to COVID-19 is adding to this stress. In this short video, I am going to share some tips for dealing with school in the midst of the rapid transition to online learning. Number one, focus on what is most important. What is most important right now is likely not your schoolwork. Students are being asked to adjust their lives in many ways. Taking care of your mental health is really important. Schoolwork can wait. Under extreme stress, you are not going to learn anything anyway. The most productive thing to do is take care of your mind before returning to your studies. Quick tips for improving how to manage your stress include learning some mindfulness, getting enough sleep, doing some physical activity, and avoiding negativity. Right now, social media can be very negative or positive. If your feed is negative, distance yourself from social media and look for more positive areas to engage. It is important to avoid unnecessary stress. Which brings me to number two, identify realistic expectations. The expectations in your course are likely changing. Educators around the globe are adapting teaching and assessment strategies to promote social distancing. We should also be helping students focus on what is most important for course success instead of demanding that they do everything. If there are still too many things to do in the time you have, you need to tell your teacher and also do your own prioritization. Both in school and in your personal life, it is important to identify what you can realistically accomplish. Write down your to-do list. If there is too much on it, you may get so stressed that you do not accomplish any of it. Prioritize the items on your to-do list by thinking about how much impact completing the task will have and how much time it will take. A prioritization matrix can help you prioritize your time. There are a few different strategies for using a priority matrix, but I am going to suggest focusing on importance and time. First, rate the importance of a task on a scale from one to 10. The importance of a task will depend on a lot of factors, including the impact on your current situation and long-term learning. Please prioritize the impact of completing a task on you and your family's mental health over your grades. What is important now may change in a day or a week from now. Then, rate the amount of time the task will take on a scale from 1 to 10. With importance on the x-axis and time on the y-axis, plot the task. Once you have rated your tasks, divide the graph into four quadrants. If a task is highly important and takes a small amount of time, you should likely do those first. They are important for your life and do not take a lot of time. I like to start my day with a few quick wins. It feels good to be productive and achieve some of those quick wins early in your day because they give you the most return for your effort. An example of something that takes a small amount of time but has a large impact on your overall productivity is trying a new stress management technique. If a task is highly important but takes a longer amount of time, it becomes a project. You cannot take on too many projects at once. Select one to three projects to work on first and devote a set amount of time to it each day. If your project is focused on meeting a basic need like finding shelter, clothing, or food for your family, definitely focus on those over your schoolwork. As a project is completed, you can add another one to the list. If a task takes a lot of time and is not very important, it is a waste of your time. Take those items off your to-do list until they become more important. That essay you are working on for a class you are confident you are going to pass anyway may fall into this category with everything else that's going on. If it does, let your teacher know that you do not have time to work on it right now. If the task takes minimal time and is not very important, you may decide to delegate the task or postpone it until it becomes more important. Maybe there is content in your course you are taking that is important for your career, but not right now. It is reasonable to download or bookmark the materials your teacher recommends to review at a later time. Where a task falls on this priority matrix will change over time. Don't hesitate to be honest with yourself about how important school really is right now. Number three, communicate with your teacher. Yes, it is a busy time for educators. However, now more than ever, communicating with your teacher is probably the most important part of making sure you have a clear path to success in your courses. 
Don't feel like telling us about your circumstances or difficulties is bothering us. We are trying to prioritize what is important in our course delivery just like you. We can probably help you decide what course-related items on your to-do list are most important. Hopefully, educators are getting some feedback from students as they adjust course expectations. Number four, advocate for what you need. It is really important that you advocate for yourself. Many of us are trying to develop teaching materials that use the least technology possible in order to make sure it is accessible to everyone. However, it's possible that as teachers are developing asynchronous learning objects, they are using something that is not accessible for you or your peers for whatever reason. Whether it be related to a lack of technology, internet access, or the need for closed captioning, make sure that your teacher knows what it is you need in order to be successful in your learning. Their job is to curate information to help make learning easier for you. They may be unintentionally suggesting resources that you cannot make use of. Please tell your educators what your limitations are so they can be mindful of that when developing or recommending resources. Number five, develop a routine. One of the best parts of learning online is that it is more flexible than in-person classes. However, that can also be a problem for students who are dealing with so many other things right now and have not developed the discipline needed for online learning. Once your personal life is normalized to the new realities of social distancing, try to set aside a specific block of time for the most important components of your coursework. What time of day can you focus most? For me, I get up before the rest of my family to work on my highest priority items. If you work on your learning in smaller chunks of time, it will improve your retention of the material. It will also help you avoid the stress of having everything related to your coursework to work on at once. Number six, support each other. Students everywhere are going through similar challenges. If you support each other, you are more likely to get through this in a positive way. You can support each other in many ways, such as group advocacy related to your course expectations, sharing coping mechanisms for dealing with stressors, and just generally being there to help each other out. People may feel isolated during social distancing. However, social distancing means maintaining a physical space, not disconnecting from the social part of being a human. Use the phone or internet to keep in touch with your peers and family. Social connection is important for mental health. Number seven, be kind. Finally, your educators are doing their best to support you, but they are people too. People with families that are also worried and struggling with uncertainty. They will have varying degrees of preparation for facilitating online learning. As you advocate for yourself, don't forget to be kind to everyone. Feel free to suggest ideas, but recognize that what is realistic for them to do may be driven by factors beyond their control. We are in this together. If you find something that the class could benefit from, please share it. Thank you for watching and take care. Please comment below with your suggestions for getting through this pandemic in the healthiest way possible. If I can help in any way, please let me know and I'll do my best to respond.